He's a red back. Oh, yuck. What are you doing? You faking it? Shut up, you're not dead. Now don't try this at home. I'm going to pour some bifenthrin on this sucker. Well, that's one way to get him. Oh, he's curling up. Oh, that worked. A <laughs> hair. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. Alrighty, so today we are talking about black beetle, those dirty little beetle that lay those eggs in your soil that turn into little witch to grub looking things. They're like a C-shaped little grub that sit in the soil and they basically kill your grass if you've got high infestations of them. If you've got low pressure of them, and it's not too bad, but you really notice it when you've got high numbers of the black beetle. So you normally sort of see them when you get really warm or dry winters or you have a dry previous summer and the summer before and you'll find you get a big infestation um, which I'm suspecting we might have this year because we had quite a warm and dry winter and also a dry summer previously as well so I'm expecting big numbers we may not but it's sometimes good just to get on top of them before we get them because I had them last season so I'm just going from experience so there's a couple of different chemicals we can use today I'm going to be using imidacloprid which a trade name for it is pride I think they just have one called grub killer down at Bunnings, you've got to make sure you look for the active in it, the active ingredient, which is imidacloprid. And basically this is a systemic, so when you apply it to the soil or the grass, you water it in with about six millimeters of water, four to six millimeters, just to get it down that soil profile, and it's then taken up by the roots and translocated through the plant itself. And it will stick in the soil for, I think it's for like from 55 to 105 days. It really depends on the sort of weather you got and the sort of traffic you get on your lawn. So basically once it's sitting in that root zone, you'll find when the insects go to feed on those roots, they'll get a bit of fluff. You'll find that when the insecticide's sitting in your actual plant and in the root zone, that when the grubs go to feed on it, they'll basically take, take in the, the chemical and after three to four days you'll start to see a bit of die off in them as well. It doesn't always work like that though. Sometimes the, the bugs will get past that chemical and they'll get further down into December and you'll have to hit them with a contact chemical like bifenthrin. Now, midacloprid is one of the systemic that you can use, or there's another great one called acelaprin, which I'd actually recommend you use. The only reason I'm not using it today is because it's pretty expensive. But that stuff works up to six months. It's better on the environment, doesn't kill any bees. It's really safe and handy to use on the lawn. It's just better for the environment and it has a longer residual on the actual bugs themselves. So they work the same way. It only attacks really the first and second instar once they get past that stage and they're a bit more formed and a bit older you find you need to hit them again with a contact when it gets further into the year, so towards summer. Let's just do a quick demo drawing for you guys that love my drawing skills, because I know they're excellent. You guys are jealous of my artistry. So basically, let's just do the soil surface. This is my best part of my art, a lawn. You've got your grassies on top. As you can see, I know how to draw lawns. I'm an artist. I can draw as I like to. Here's a little beetles in the sky. Yeah boy, it looks like a fly. Anyway, so what they do is, around this time of year, so September, they drop down in there. Might be a little bit early, depending on your, your temperatures where you are. But they drop down in the soil, they lay the little eggies, and those hatch within two to five weeks, depending on your soil temperatures or your air temperatures. They normally say if you are above 15 degrees, Celsius, you find that they start hatching and start make, having some activity. So they basically have a couple of instars. So instars are just their growth stages. So when they're born, they're at instar number one. And so they're just little grubbies in the ground. And they're basically just feeding on our organic matter. 
That's what the first instar does. Now they normally do that from the first to second instar. Once you hit the third instar, so instar, instar three, they're a little bit bigger. They're getting towards that 15 to 20 mil size. What color are we gonna use? Let's go green. So they're like a little C-shaped grub with a black head. And they're sitting in there and they are feeding on your root zone, which is when you start to see a bit of damage. Now you normally see this round. It can be late October. October from November through to December, early January. Yet again, that is depending on where you live. This is more where I live, which is a little bit of a cooler climate. We're basically getting about 15 to 20 degree days during the day. If you're in Queensland, you're probably out more towards 20 to 28, sometimes even hitting the 30s. So you're probably gonna find that you do see them quite a bit earlier than we do. And so from that, they feed on that. You start seeing a lot of browning off areas in where they've been feeding and it looks like a big dry patch in your lawn, but it's actually black beetle here. So you can normally easily peel that back quite easily. And it sort of comes back like, almost like turf rolls. Like it comes back and you can pull it back and it's quite easy to pull back. Now that's one sign of knowing that's what the problem is. We also know the problem is that is if you've been watering it quite a bit, you've used your wetting agent, you're still finding problem areas that just look like dry patch. It's probably gonna be your black beetle. So make sure you hit it early. Around about now, October, if you're living where I am, Melbourne, Canberra, Orange, basically the country New South Wales. If you're going to more warmer climates like Queensland, even out, out west a bit more from where I am, places like that, you probably want to be spraying it. Well, hit it now if you haven't hit it already. Otherwise, next season, make sure you spray it early September. Now, if you're using things like a Celeprin, you can start spraying that now or early as well. They basically all spray them around the same, similar sort of time frame. It's just with a celeprin, you can chuck it down. You're normally pretty safe for the whole season. Whereas your bifenthrin, those ones in particular, you gotta constantly do them until the black beetle have actually been demolished or wiped out. That's the best way to go about it, and that's the best way to apply it around this time of year, and that is how they work. So if you guys are already starting to see evidence of black beetle appearing in your lawn, so you've got areas that look like they're dry patch, but you're watering the lawn enough and they're wet as well. Probably got insects in there, so check it. The best way to check is basically go up to the turf and see if it's easy to pull back as if the roots have been cut off. That's the best way to tell. So we'll just peel off like like newly laid turf does if it hasn't got a root system bedded into the soil yet. So the product we use when you've got that problem happening is bifenthrin. So that's just another product. I got that one from CRT, it's called Out of Bounds, but you can see the active in it is bifenthrin. And so that's basically just gonna knock down those bugs that are there already. Instead of being something that's gonna be a preventative, it's actually gonna be something that hits them when they're hanging out in your soil already. So that's your best mode of action if you're already seeing bugs. If you're not seeing bugs yet, but you think there might be some down in the soil, or there's birds around, you've seen black beetle around, consider spraying a celeprin or a midacloprin to knock those guys. So if I could recommend any of these three products, I'd recommend a celeprin because it's gonna have longer lasting effects. It's better for the environment, it doesn't harm your bees or anything. It'll only attack those ones that you wanna attack. It's good for your pets, your kids. It's really the safest one. You can even get away without wearing these little spray mask things just here. It says on the label, they didn't even, you don't even have to wear those. The only downside with the Celeprin is that it is a bit more expensive, whereas the Imidacloprid and your Biofenthrin is quite significantly cheaper. So you can find that also down at Bunnings, and I found this stuff down at CRT. It's pretty easy to, to find stuff. Whereas your Celeprin, you sort of have to get it from turf suppliers and places like that, and it is more expensive. As I always say, make sure you're wearing your PPE. So in this case, I'm gonna wear some spray pants, long sleeve shirt, enclosed blue, boots, enclosed boots. Gun boots will be even better, but I don't have any gun boots. I almost forgot, but don't forget your, your gloves. It's a good look, eh? Should wear this all the time. What a mad ball. Not parachute pants. When spraying this stuff, Make sure you wear a face mask because, I mean, it's not real. It's pretty safe and good stuff. Can you hear me? Pretty safe and good stuff, but you always just want to be careful when you're spraying insecticides. And it just makes you look more pro as well. When you've got one of these suckers on, you can get these down at Buddings. So you can get them anywhere, really. Do you think these are my thoughts? Also, before you spray this stuff, make sure you mow your lawn because you want to leave it sitting in the lawn for quite a while on the grass clippings just so you knock all those insects out so mow your lawn and then go spray it afterwards and probably don't mow your lawn at least for another five to seven days just make sure that that insecticide really hits those black beetle and all those other insects that you're trying to attack
All right, so we're all done. So last thing to remember is make sure you water it in and then you don't walk back in there until the whole area is dry. So don't let your kids in there or your dogs or your pets or anything. Wait until the area is dry and then you can go back in there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like my videos. Remember I do weekly uploads. So subscribe if you want to see some more and chuck a like in there if you feel like it. And you have a good week. Just missed a spot in my lawn. Just missed the blade.